this um this these these new regulations by the uh, Trump administration um they are um uh they're basically a way of limiting immigration particularly um legal immigration for people who are already here as well um this public charge stuff. And I mean, it fails under the weight of its own um, rules anyways. But here is uh, Aaron Burnett in the ongoing saga of Ken Cuccinelli trying to make the Trump policy fit in to, at the very least, the perception we have about ourselves in this country. That perception, I would say, is... Um, probably a little bit more aspirational than actual, but nevertheless, let's use this frame when it is um, worthwhile. And, and to a certain extent, there is an obvious truth to the fact that it wasn't necessarily always with open arms and it wasn't always necessarily pleasant, but this country was built and has been built through much, much of its history on taking in refugees and immigrants from around the world. And it has strengthened um, this uh, society in, in many respects. Um, here's Aaron Burnett. Again, returning to Ken Cuccinelli's, you'll recall yesterday we played this clip when he was asked about, we'll take in your poor, your wretched. And then he said, and he added, we'll take in, we will Take in your poor and your wretched who can stand up on their own two feet and blah, blah, blah. Now, that concept is good um, for, for Ken Cuccinelli. We'll, 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 we'll pick it up after this. You say this is about self-sufficiency and you say that proudly. You heard me play yeah. you uh, this morning uh, when you quoted the Emma Lazarus poem on the Statue oh, of Oh, I wasn't quoting it. I was answering a question. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. But you were giving your version of what you thought the poem should say, right? No. No, I was not. You said, give me your tired and your poor who can question. stand on... I'm not I, rewriting poetry. Okay, I'm well, what I'm you said is, give policy. me your tired and your poor who can stand on their own two feet and who will not become a public charge. I just played you saying it. Right, I listened. Okay, okay, What's so I'm question? just making sure you're not disputing you said. Okay, so obviously the actual poem is quite different. I'm going to read it. Right, I was answering a question. I wasn't writing poetry, Aaron. Don't don't change the facts. I, I'm not changing the facts. You, I'm just you're saying. You're twisting this like no, 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 everybody no, 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 else no. on the left no, no, has no, done all day today. No, 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 I think it's today. important. You're saying that it's very important to be able to stand on your own two feet. A lot yes, of people may support you and respect your saying that. But the poem doesn't say that, right? The poem that's I didn't on the Statue of the Liberty. Poem. I didn't bring up the poem. Well, you, An NPR reporter did, and now you have. Okay, I didn't but, bring it up. I'll answer okay. your substantive intelligence so questions. So I'm going to give Please you a substantive intelligence. Okay. <laughs> However it came up, you said, give me your tired and your poor. Okay. Who can stand on their own two feet and who will not become a public charge. That's what you right. said. I just played it. The poem reads, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of the teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Wretched poor refuse, right? That's what the poem says America's supposed to stand for. So what do you think America stands for? Well, of course, that poem was referring back to people coming from Europe where they had class-based societies where people were considered wretched if they weren't in the right class. And it was introduced, it Pause was written it. one now, year. Now, what the F is this guy talking yeah, about? Yeah, America was a total communist egalitarian utopia. But wait no, a second, I, like, even I get it. it. What's get his it. logic? His logic is that, yes, in, in the way he's talking about class is that in a European context at that time, you might even be relatively loaded, but you're looked down upon because you don't have a title or something. And so you can come here and you don't have to put on airs, but you have a lot of money still. So you can stand on your own two feet. So class is identity. I think it's literally, what? I think it's basically what he's saying. You don't know the difference between Poor? Like the idea. I, I'm not saying he's, I'm telling you how I think he's spinning it, dude. I, I think he. I think he's just skipping over poor. I think. <laughs> I think this is like he should rewrite the Bible, like the meek who own their own businesses well, the shall inherit one, the earth. The, the operative like, the small business. The, the meek operative, small business owner. I mean, uh, Aaron may have hit, uh, may have uh, you know in, uh, emphasized wretched, but the poor seems to be the operative issue here. I think he's and, not talking. I think he, poor of title. Poor of title. 
There's right, a lot right. of there's a lot of old Regency dramas about that type of thing. This guy's he's got a I'm shoe sure factory. Fine, I'm sure he wants to marry the Duchess. Everything's problem. Oh, Everything's fine, it. but it's That's a problem close. because he ain't a dude. Poor of Olive Gardens. It was written one year, one year after the first federal public charge rule was written that says, and I'll quote it, any person unable to take care of himself without becoming a public charge, unquote, would be inadmissible or in the terms that my agency deals with uh, they can't do what's called adjusting status getting a green card becoming legal permanent residents same exact time Aaron same exact time in the year it went on the Statue of Liberty 1903 another federal law was passed expanding the elements of public charge yeah. by Congress this is a I mean when my family came here they came here as, as crofters as from Scotland right they could they had no education they had nothing. Right. But I am here because they were allowed in. And I'm an anchor on CNN. Right. right. So I'm just and saying I, I wouldn't be here. My Italian grandfather sponsored his two cousins to come here. This is a tradition that many of our families, yours and mine, right. can point to. Yeah. This right. is but not Aaron, we're white. We're white from Europe. Well, we weren't at the time, but we are now. Exclusionary, uh, no, 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 but what I'm saying all, is I would have been excluded. I don't know about you, but I, I would have been. Well, no, that's not, you're, you're deciding on one point, and our ISOs are going to take what's called a totality of the circumstances test, which has been long been the test for public charge. Okay. And this would. He's lying about this, and I'll tell you this. Here's the, here's the thing. Um, the public charge thing is a vague term, and the rules and regulations that define it. And according to this new rules and regulation, they must have a 51%. They must assess with each uh, potential um, uh, immigrant. They must assess that there's a 51% chance that they will end up being a public charge. Now, we know that at least 80% of all immigrants do not become a public charge. And there is no subset of that group that has any different numbers than that. You can't say only 50% of, of immigrants from Guatemala don't become public charges. Or only, you know, only 40% um, of people from Moldova, Moldovia, Moldova, whatever. Moldovia. Don't become uh, public charges. There is no Department of Homeland Statistics that would indicate that you can make an assessment on any group of immigrants that they're going to be a public charge. 51% sure. So this is ripe for abuse and it's intimidating immigrants and it's total BS.